Hi everyone. Thank you very much for joining me on this session. I'm Kyle Lima, I work for Regalia, and I'm going to present to you uh, today about decimal values for JavaScript. And yeah, let's discuss a little bit about this and what this proposal is meant to be, okay? So first, who am I? I told you my name already, uh, but yeah, I'm Kyle. Uh, this is my family, and we are from the northeast of Brazil, um, from a very small town in the countryside. I mean, it's kind of close to the, the capital, and also close to, to beach as well. Uh, but yeah, it's called Santa Amaro. It's a very close place, and the place you can see here is where, uh, well, before the pandemic and etc. I uh, used to hang out with my friends, so there is a lot of interesting memories and very nice memories from this place specifically. So yeah, this is where I am. Uh, and now I think it's fine to talk about JavaScript. Okay, so uh, decimals are kind of close to numbers and we already have numbers and do arithmetic operations in JavaScript. And some people might, might ask themselves, what's the problem with numbers? So I can do pretty much everything that I want. Uh, with numbers. So, well, let's discuss about this. This is a very typical example uh, of problems that programmers might face in JS using numbers, the primitive numbers that we, we, we have in the language. So, if we try to add 0 0.1 and 0 0.2, we expect, of course, that the result is going to be 0 0.3. Uh, but if we do a comparison there, so if you write a program where we have literal 0.1, literal 0.2, equals, 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 literal 0.3, the comparison is going to return false, which is quite not intuitive, I would say, and actually surprising if you don't know what's going on under the hood. And if you go a little bit further and try to write the version uh, just below, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 equals equal, equals 0 0.3, 0, 0, 0, and 4 in a very far fractional place, which is a number quite close to 0 0.3, I would say, um, it returns true. So what's going on there? Um, this is quite surprising if you don't know uh, binary flip numbers and etc. And I think this is the major problem of numbers in JavaScript right now. So it's about the precision and about the rounding that happens because it's using a binary float point numbers, a double binary float point numbers. And this is not a specific case for JavaScript. It's also a problem for C++. So if you use double in C++, you would face the same issue. So since um, we are using binary float numbers in JavaScript, it means that there are some decimals that we cannot uh, he present or encode into this format. So this is not quite clear when you are writing a program because if you write a decimal, uh, if you write a, 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 a double literal, it's actually gonna set the program is gonna compile and everything is gonna happen. But there is there are some holdings that might happen there. So even though in the previous example we have 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 as literals there, it doesn't mean that actually the real representation of this number are those numbers exactly. They are going to round to a very um, nearby number, that the, the nearest number that the binary floats can represent. So those houndings are quite unexpected if you are not familiar with uh, doubles and how doubles works under the hood, which I would say that is a lot of people and it makes numbers unsuitable for some applications. This might happen as well when you have an operation like an addition, and the result of an addition or the addition itself is cannot be represented as a, as a binary float number, this is gonna round as well. And those roundings will cause the, the issues that we saw before. And yeah, most developers, the problem of this is that most developers design algorithms thinking in decimal space. So, uh, at least myself, even though I know float numbers, I usually think on decimal place because that's how we, uh, most of cultures uh, use it to think uh, when thinking about um, decimal values and etc. So this is the major problem that we have with just number, I would say. And there are ways to work around all these issues. So, of course, if you look into NPM or uh, other sources, you can see that there is a lot of user lens libraries, for example, BigJS, 
uh, to solve this issue. So people can can use this BigJS, for example, uh, to to try to solve this issue and don't have those unexpected rounding and, and etc. Uh, people are also trying to encode their own value, so they are creating uh, data structures. Uh, they are uh, encoding Matisse and an exponent and pass them around. There are some people using strings uh, to store the decimal value and do operations, which is kind of painful. I would say that those circle back in libraries as well. Uh, some applications represent money using cents, uh, maybe using numbers or big int. Uh, depends on how how much how long is the the value they want to represent, and yeah, there there are some uh, some cases where people perform calculations in another language. So if you have a client server application and your server is not written in JavaScript, let's say that it's written in C plus plus or Swift or any other language that support decimal natively. Uh, they would do those calculations there and just use JavaScript as a front end to present numbers for users and etc. So these are the things that JavaScript developers are doing so far. So I think we can conclude that uh, the community itself is already identified those issues. So if they want to use decimals the way they tend to do, they are uh, looking for workarounds and you can find them. And there are some problems, of course, with each of these. And that's why the idea is to propose a new primitive value where we could manipulate decimal values directly in JavaScript, given it's a high level, a uh, high level language. I would say this kind of makes sense. Well, uh, just being more specific, which kind of use cases we would need uh, decimals and not use numbers? So for financial applications, though, those roundings, uh, if they get out of control, they can actually cause a lot of um, uh, losses for uh, for uh, people using those applications. So yeah, financial applications are quite interesting in that. Um, there are also applications uh, that would like to do precise, precise calculation, like astronomical calculation in physics. And I would say that certain games uh, if they would like to have uh, and be pretty close to the reality, uh, they would like to also use decimals as well instead of using binary float numbers. All right, so which kind of solutions we have? I mentioned to you the workarounds, but the major problem of workarounds is that in majority of those cases, you need to rely on extra source code, which means that your application in the end is going to be bigger because you need to bundle uh, those libraries or even this like uh, own written scripts to manipulate decimal. So what are possible solutions that might have? If we introduce a new primitive type, it means that all JavaScript engines will support and will come with all the tooling necessary to manipulate decimal values uh, installed. So there is no need to JavaScript programs to actually have those extra uh, resources to also manipulate um, uh, decimals values in general. So also like having uh, this built within the language, uh, it's also better because we can also support arithmetic operation directly and not need to call uh, functions uh, or any other kind of things to manipulate those values as well. So they feel like a uh, first instance, I would say, in the language itself. And we have like, uh, I would say three ways here, probably like more ways, but the main thing, the main lines of thought that we had was, we might actually provide to JS developers fixed size decimal, which would be uh, decimal 128, for example, a decimal that is represented with uh, 128 bits. Um, 128 bits. Uh, we could have arbitrary precision decimals that we would call the decimal in this presentation, and also use rationals. We discarded uh, this rationals for this proposal, and if you would like to know the reasons, I would uh, I would let, leave this for the questions if you were interested to know why why rationals are not very suitable for uh, decimal manipulation. Why we think this actually. So let's talk a little bit about one of the solutions that we might have. So let's imagine that we are uh, having a new primitive type called decimal 128. So what is this kind of type? 
So this is a representation of a value that uh, has a maximum number of digits that it, it can represent. So it's stored in 128 bits and we have in those bits, those size, uh, the sign, of course it's one bit and also an exponent that is uh, goes from up to 6144 and can be ne negative number as well. And also a mantisa that is a 34 base 10 digits. So we can have 34 uh, digits in the number uh, of mantisa and this is the precision that we would get. And the value is represented as a sign times mantisa times 10 power exponent. So this is how the value is represented on, on decimal 128, for example. There are some uh, prior experiences on that. So JavaScript is not a new language to introduce uh, decimals. So we have fixed size decimal support on languages like Python and C Sharp. That is the 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 e standard of I3E 74, uh, 754 2008. And Swift also supports a fixed fixed size decimal as well. And not as a coincidence, uh, we can see that for the definition of IEEE 754 2008, uh, we have both 64 bits and 128 bits, uh, and also more representations. And we can see that the representation is pretty much the same that we are trying to choose for decimal 128 as well. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned to you, you have sine exponent and mantissa, and like the values is presented with a combination of those components. And there are two binary encodings for that. Is there is the Intel one and the IBM one. And yeah, so this is standard. Or some other language can implement that. Uh, the starter actually allows us to uh, not implement every single concept of the uh, of the, the specification and still be compliant. I would say. And the idea to choose this is actually to to have already a kind of a proof design and data that the data data model that is uh, used by other languages as well and have some discussions and design principles behind it. Okay, so what about this uh, IEEE 754 uh, decimal representation? So they are quite similar to binary foot point numbers. There is like decimal infinity, not a number, and values. Uh, there are a lot of various rounding modes that can happen for those numbers. And there are also non specification uh, signals uh, to recover from error conditions as well. So let's say we try to to uh, divide by zero or any other kind of this case, this can signal uh, the application to say, okay, that I think something going on. In this proposal, as I mentioned to you before, the idea is if we use a fixed side decimal, uh, we would use the specification of IEEE 7.5.4 of 128 bits because it's this specific encoding in data model is actually very suitable for um, the primary uh, use case that we have right now in mind that is the financial application and it's the precision of 34 digits on, on significant digits uh, is quite enough to uh, financial applications in general so talking a little bit about how this new primitive would work in JS. So how could we create new decimal one, 128 digits? So we can use literals in this case. So if we have a literal and we have the suffix M, it's going to turn uh, this value into a decimal 128. So in this case here, we can just say let A equals 0.123 M. This is going to create a decimal. 0 0.123 and the major difference from numbers is that the real value of this the real mat mat mathematical value of this variable a is 0 0.123 uh, we also can use the scientific notation as well for literal so we can use uh, as we have for the second line let b equals minus 1 power to um, 10 power to minus 10 exponent we will have this very like small number as well he presented there. 
of course we can use and we can create decimal 128 128 values using the constructor as a type of cast operators so we can see here for example let a equals decimal 128 uh, 3 is going to cast the number 3 into uh, decimal 128 uh, value 3 of course and we can do that for strings also for uh, for booleans and big int and etc. So it's essentially used it as a casting operations, I would say. But yeah, you, you can create those numbers uh, using the constructor. Also, the idea is uh, to support directly um, the arithmetic operations, mainly the binary one. So for the binary addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and reminder, um we would be able to use those numbers directly so the idea is also to try to support uh, power operation as well uh, and of course following what we have for javascript right now uh, the additional the addition uh, between a decimal uh, and a, a string results in a concatenation so we call we cast the the decimal into a string and then we concatenate the results just like what we have for right now for numbers and also big int and also like big int if we try to mix decimal 128 with other types we throw what that error so yeah besides the addition operation if you try to add for example a decimal and a big int it's going to throw that error it's also the same for subtraction, even if you try to subtract a decimal and a string, this is going to throw a type error as well. So this is intended by design, and the design principle is pretty much the same at the end. So there are some operations that we cannot guarantee uh, the precision, or oh, this precision um, might be wrong, or oh, mixing those kind of things is potentially also a bug issue. We would like to raise a exception in this case instead of uh, casting uh, every single um, input for the operation. And of course, um, it's possible to use decimal one, 128 values uh, in comparison operators. So lower than equals equals, uh, greater than equal, and of course, strictly equals and etc. And since we are comparing comparing mathematical value here, and there is no precision issue or anything that is unexpected for arithmetic operations, we can in this case compare um, decimal values with order types as well. Because like the comparison is pretty much easy to do, because every decimal value has a mathematical value, and also other types can have a math math mathematical value as well. So yeah, just comparing those mathematical values is totally possible. And we are planning to allow this in this proposal as well, which is kind of quite handy, I would say. There are some specific things that it would be interesting to highlight about decimal 128, I would say. So rounding on arithmetic operation actually happens in pretty much every single uh, operation that we can do. So in operation that, uh, results in a number where the precision is bigger than 34 digits for decimal 128, it's gonna cause a rounding uh, to happen. I mean, the reason is, is quite uh, simple. Uh, given there is a fixed size precision, uh, we need to round because the number with a higher precision is not represented in the, into this primitive value. So the rounding algorithm that is used by uh, decimal 128 is the half even. I'm not going to explain what, how half even is, and if you have questions about it, we can go uh, a little bit deeper on this in the question section. Also, all operators use the same uh, rounding rule, so it doesn't matter if it's a division, or subtraction, or addition, or multiplication. If the precision is higher, we are going to round using the half even um, to fix, uh, to, to, to essentially get, get the precision that the decimal 128 can represent. So what are the advantages of Desmo 128? So its performance and memory usage is way better when we compare with Big Decimal. 
I didn't talk about Big Decimal yet, but you will see wha what's the major difference between them. Also, um, as I mentioned to you before, Decimal 128 is quite suitable for financial application and can be used by uh, a very big scale uh, uh, um, financial application as well. And the routing uh, happens more intuitively than binary floats. And I, I think here the major thing is that uh, thinking in the programmer side and when we have literals, we know that when we are writing uh, a number, a decimal number, a decimal value, uh, we know that this value is going to be exactly represented if the precision of this number mm -hmm. fits into the decimal 128 uh, value. So yeah, the, the rounding that happens here is way more intuitively than what we have for binary functions right now. Well, the downside of this, um, this primitive value is that we still have rounding happening um, when the precision of number is higher uh, than what we, what we can represent. Uh, also, there is a consider considerable limitation on value representation when we compare with big decimal space. And this is, of course, because when in, in decimal 128, we have a fixed size. So we have 128 bits to represent a number, while big decimal, as I will mention to you, can represent like any number uh, of any size. And yeah, because of this, uh, there is this limitation for decimal 128. Even though with 128 bits, you can represent a lot of numbers. And actually with 32 and 64, we can represent a lot of numbers already, but yeah. Uh, that is, I mean, that is this limitation anyway. Okay, so I talked a little bit about the small 128 solution that we are thinking. In the other road that we are following right now, uh, designing this this new proposal is big decimal. So what's big decimal? Um, well, big decimal is quite close to the data representation of 128 bits, but we don't have the limitation of size. So the number here can, uh, the number of digits here can grow with the number as long as you have memory space. And of course, as long as it is suitable to, to manipulate those numbers as well. But yeah, there is no limitation on the, the, the size, uh, the length of, the, of the, the, the value we are trying to represent. And we can represent almost any decimal value exactly. Uh, I would say here that we cannot represent some numbers, of course. So if you have like a, a number with infinite precision, you cannot represent that with uh, big and small, of course. But like besides that, that is um, that, 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 that is not much what we cannot represent. And the representation here follows what we had before. We have sine, we have exponent, and we have mantissa. And the matisse is a big int, so you can represent uh, as long as the memory allows you to any number. And well, of course, uh, the value that it's representing with those components is sine times matisse times 10 power exponent, where sine can be plus one and minus one, which is positive and negative sign. And yeah, exponent uh, is a power 10 at the matisse. So. That's how you represent big decimals. So which other language actually uses big decimals? So as I mentioned to you, some languages already use fixed size length uh, decimals. Uh, and if we take it as an example, Ruby in Java, we can have uh, languages with arbitrary length decimal support. So those are very popular languages. And it's fine that, that like, Ruby is a high level language, pretty much like JavaScript, I would say. And Java is also a high level language. And having this support is quite useful uh, for some applications, as I mentioned before. So the big decimal usage here, so the API that we have, follows pretty much what we have for decimal 128. So the idea is, with the big decimal is to also provide literals uh, using the M suffix as well. So the way we write a program with big decimal uh, and to create a big decimal is pretty close to what we had for decimal 128. Uh, the idea is also to support the arith arithmetic operations directly. I think that's the major uh, gain 
when we compare uh, with user library user libraries uh, crafted libraries because it's not possible to have a user crafted crafted libraries um, to support directly uh, the operations maybe you can but it's a little bit more uh, difficult if you have like the true number um, subscription but yeah anyway uh, we don't have operator overloading in JavaScript so it's quite hard to for example support uh, comparison operators and etc so there is to support them as well uh, also strictly equals would work in this case um, for those numbers those primitive numbers um, and we also have the big, big decimal constructor that it can be used as a tab casting for other primitives that we already support in JavaScript. Um, as I mentioned to you, some divisions uh, might require infinite precision, and we might need some uh, decisions that we would like to do. So, for uh, for this, so if you have an example, if we try to divide one by three, this is not gonna be able. We are not going to be able to represent the the, the result of this exactly with the decimal because like this generates an infinite. Uh, precision number and we don't have infinite memory in practical uh, cases so yeah this is going to look forever for example this operation um, so how those languages like Ruby and Java solves this issue so in Java uh, division actually requires math context so in the max context you define uh, the result precision and the rounding that we like if there is no precision defined for uh, the, this operation, it's going to throw an exception. Uh, if the, the result of the division is a, is a number with a infinity precision. The thing is that Java don't support the decimals directly on the division operation. So you need to call big decimal dot divide to use the division uh, on, on, on Java. Actually, this is also the same for the arithmetic operations as well. So big decimal in Java doesn't support arithmetic uh, operators directly, as far as I know. In Ruby, um, big decimal is also supported for the division operator, right? But there is a global setting uh, that sets the division precision. And yeah, you, you can set this uh, manually uh using big decimal dot limit and uh, the division is gonna round to this precision as well so what we have in mind for the js version so we think that having um we would like to support this on on the division operator just like we do for big int for example uh, but the thing is that uh, we don't want to have those global settings in javascript we don't think it is a very nice design for JavaScript in general. So the idea that we have in mind here is to have this following rule. So if the division is represented and that is a finite precision number in the result, we give this exact result uh, for the division operation. However, if the result of the division operation is an infinite precision number, we then round to an arbitrary precision. So there is no way to configure the rounding and the precision for the division operator. And if you need to have a control, controlled manner to, to the division to happen, the rounding that we want to apply and the precision that we want to get for this operation, uh, you can then use the big decimal dot define because the big decimal dot define, as I'm going to show you in the standard library, accepts uh, uh, options to instruct how the rounding should happen for a given uh, uh, arithmetic operation, right? So that's the design we have right now. Uh, the other fronts that we could follow here is that not supporting division operator at all for uh, that big decimal, which we think it's a uh, kind of not very nice, I would say. And the other thing is like throw an exception error just like Java does when the result is infinite precision number, which is also unfortunate, I would say. So I think the design that we have right now, even though it's not like definitive, is the one that we think that is, is the best one. 
So by we, I mean uh, the champion group, like myself included. So what are the upsides for Big Decimal? So Big Decimal uh, can represent any decimal exactly. So we are never losing precision if you're doing a lot of operations. Uh, also, it's very it's much much more simpler than rationals because we don't need to to do GCD uh, and addition, subtraction, and multiplication can all be calculated exactly anyway. Uh, the downsides of big decimal is that it can be a very very high uh, memory intensive and computationally comp comp intensive to represent those numbers. And the multiplication also increases the precision quite fast as well. So I would be surprised if you have out of memory errors if or you're manipulating a lot of big decimals with a lot of multiplication as well. And the precision like increases um, indefinitely, I would say. So let's talk about the standard library. So I think one of the most important operations that we can provide in the STL is a, a round operation. So in this case, let's say that we have either big decimal or decimal 128, and you can call round passing the decimal and then the options bag. So the options bag is an object uh, that receives the rounding mode and the maximum fraction digits options. And the rounding mode is going to select uh, the algorithm that we are going to perform the rounding. It can be down, half up, half even, etc. So this is essentially uh, uh, the way that we would like to round the number. And one use case, one example of the usage of this this library is, uh, as we can see, big decimal dot round um, the value three point twenty five with half up and maximum fraction digits of one, the result is going to be uh, 3.3. .3. Well, half up means that if you are in the middle of the representation, in the case uh, 3.25, and we would like to round for one a fractional, fractional digit, uh, we, uh, we move the decimal digit that we are rounding up for one. So in this case, two goes to three. So, well, half down is going to be different. So half down is going to result in here 3.2, for example, because if you're in half, uh, we, go, we choose the lower version of the number and so on, so off. I can go into details in the question sections if you would like to see which rounding modes we support. But the idea right now is to support at least, I think, uh, nine modes. So we are aligning with other rounding uh, uh, operation that might have for uh, Intel number format and also for temporal as well. Well, uh, of course, the idea is to have support on the STL for arithmetic operations. So in this case, we would have big decimal or decimal 128 dot divide, and this can opportunately receive uh, option bag, and this option bag is the same of the rounding one. And as I mentioned to you before, while the division operator uh, have very specific semantics, if you would like to round the result in a very specific case, you can then use the big decimal dot divide. So in this case, we have big decimal dot divide one uh, and three, and the rounding mode is half up, and we want to the result to have only uh, one fractional digit. So the result of this is going to be 0 0.3, for example. You might actually observe that while round uh, is not very useful for decimal 128 because you have a fixed set arbitrary length, it's actually quite important to be decimal. And we would like also to provide this to decimal 128 because 100, decimal 128 would align what we have, for example, for numbers and also for uh, big int. I think big int big doesn't support round anyway. So, um, of course, the idea is not to only support uh, divide, but also support uh, add or subtract or multiply or reminder or power. And the idea, the major, the major thing, one of the things that we would like to support those on the STL is, is that this makes decimals quite easier to polyfill. So, 
just as we, as we have, uh, produced by the V18 on the big decimal. So uh, if we have those uh, those uh, static methods into the construction of the, the the primitive value, it's quite possible to write polyfills that's gonna use and call, add, subtract, multiply, and etc. Um, for uh, for JavaScript environments that doesn't doesn't support decimals yet. So and also for that big decimal. If we would like to round an operation, uh, this is the major way to do so as well. So it's not only because of the polyfill, but also like controlling how the round is performed is another reason to have those arithmetic operations as functions as well. So there are some supports on the prototype as well. So decimal and big decimal prototype would have the following um, the following uh, support. So two string, which is gonna cast the primitive value into a string, to local string, which is gonna cast uh, the value to a local string, but like it's local sensitive. So yeah, you can use that as well. Um, to fix it, to explanation and to precision, uh, the idea is to align it is what we have for both big decimal, big in and number dot prototype as well. So we would have all of them for uh, decimal 128 and big decimal. Another thing that is important to say is that uh, we can choose to normalize or not normalize a decimal value. Uh, I mean, from the proposal perspective, but we decided that we would like to always normalize the decimals as well. So in this case, there is no way to observe differences in precision among numbers. So if we have 0 0.2 and 0 0.20, uh, both of them are the same number, uh, but in the implementation side, there is no difference between them. We are going to represent them as the very same value as well. There are some implementation that that does take in consideration the precision, and but that that's not the case that we are trying to do for uh, big decimal or decimal one hundred twenty eight. And if you would like to store the precision uh, in an application, uh, it's recommended that you store the precision. Um, uh, with the decimal value as well. So you need to store both of them if the precision is important for your application. The major reason here is that we think that is the, the complexity that it introduces uh, is not worth it. Um, and also the meta model design and implementation is way more simpler if we normalize all the numbers as well. Well, I think that's it. Um, I would like to thank you very much for watching uh, this presentation. And I think it's time to go for the questions and discussions. So let's move it.